In the vast expanse of maritime history, few tales are as haunting and enduring as the mystery of the Mary Celeste. Imagine a ship discovered adrift on the open ocean sail set, cargo intact, but not a single soul on board. No signs of struggle, no distress signals, just a silent vessel shrouded in an impenetrable veil of uncertainty. What fate befell Captain Benjamin Briggs, his family, and his crew on that ill-fated voyage in 1872? Join us as we delve deep into this maritime enigma, exploring every twist and turn, every theory and speculation, in a quest to shed light on the dark waters that still conceal the truth about the Mary Celeste. The year was 1872, a time when the promise of prosperity drew many across the Atlantic. New York Harbor buzzed with activity, ships coming and going, each carrying hopes and dreams to distant shores. Among them stood the Mary Celeste, a sturdy brigantine anchored and awaiting her journey to Genoa, Italy. Recently refitted and deemed seaworthy, she was ready to brave the challenges of the open sea. At her helm was Captain Benjamin Spooner Briggs, a 37-year-old mariner with a sterling reputation. Born into a seafaring family in Massachusetts, Briggs was known for his devout Christian faith and meticulous attention to detail. Accompanying him were his wife, Sarah Elizabeth Briggs, and their two-year-old daughter, Sophia Matilda. Leaving behind their seven-year-old son, Arthur, with his grandmother was a difficult decision. But they believed the journey would be a valuable experience for young Sophia. The crew consisted of seven carefully selected men, each bringing experience and skill to the voyage. First mate Albert Richardson was a trusted colleague of Briggs, known for his competence and reliability. The other crew members, second mate Andrew Gilling, steward Edward Head, and seaman Falkert Lawrenson, Arian Martins, Boshan Goodshad, and Gottlieb Faulkner, were all seasoned sailors with solid reputations. Their cargo was 1,701 barrels of denatured alcohol, a volatile substance used in Europe for fortifying wines and spirits. It was valuable, but required careful handling due to its flammability. As final preparations were made, an air of optimism surrounded the Mary Celeste. The weather forecasts were favorable, promising clear skies and calm seas. Families gathered on the docks, waving goodbye as the ship set sail on November 7, 1872. The Mary Celeste caught the Atlantic breeze, her sails billowing as she headed toward the open ocean, unaware of the ominous fate that awaited her. Nearly a month later, on December 4, 1872, the British brigantine De Gratia was navigating the North Atlantic, approximately 400 miles east of the Azores. Captain David Morehouse stood on deck, scanning the horizon, when he noticed a vessel behaving erratically. The ship appeared to be adrift, her sails in disarray, moving aimlessly through the waves. As the De Gratia drew closer, Morehouse recognized the vessel. It was the Mary Celeste. A chill ran down his spine. He knew Captain Briggs personally. Some accounts suggest the two captains had dined together in New York before their departures, though this remains a matter of historical debate. Concerned for the safety of those on board, Morehouse ordered a boarding party led by his first mate, Oliver DeVoe. As they approached, an unsettling silence enveloped them. Climbing aboard, they found no one to greet them. The ship was completely deserted. The condition of the Mary Celeste was perplexing. Some of her sails were set, others missing or torn. The rigging was damaged but not severely. The ship's single lifeboat was gone, and the binnacle housing the ship's compass had shifted, perhaps due to rough seas. Personal belongings, including clothing, boots, and pipes, were left behind. In the galley, food supplies remained abundant, enough to last six months. The cargo hold contained 1,692 barrels of alcohol. Nine barrels were empty. The ship's logbook was discovered in the mate's cabin, with the last entry dated November 25th, placing the Mary Celeste off Santa Maria Island in the Azores. The entries up to that point indicated nothing unusual. There was about three and a half feet of water in the bilge. Not ideal, but not alarming for a ship of her size. Perplexed and deeply unsettled, the boarding party returned to the De Gratia to report their findings. Why would an experienced captain and his crew abandon a perfectly seaworthy vessel? 
leaving behind their possessions and valuable cargo. The question hung heavily in the air as they decided to take the Mary Celeste to Gibraltar for a formal investigation. Upon arriving in Gibraltar on December 13, 1872, Captain Morehouse hoped the authorities could shed light on the mystery. Instead, he and his crew found themselves under suspicion. The British Vice Admiralty Court launched a formal investigation, led by Attorney General Frederick Solly Flood, known for his meticulous and sceptical nature. Solly Flood suspected foul play. He questioned why the De Gracia crew would encounter the Mary Celeste under such circumstances. Examining the ship, he noted cuts and marks on the bow he believed could be evidence of a collision or violent encounter. A stained sword found among Briggs's possessions was tested, but the technology of the time couldn't conclusively determine if the stains were blood. The De Gratia crew faced intense scrutiny, their testimonies dissected for inconsistency. Solly Flood considered the possibility that they had overtaken the Mary Celeste, murdered her crew, and fabricated the story of finding her adrift. However, there was no tangible evidence to support these accusations. The cargo was intact, personal belongings undisturbed, and no signs of struggle or violence on board. As the inquiry progressed, various theories emerged. Some speculated that the crew mutinied, possibly due to alcohol fumes causing hallucinations or aggressive behavior. Others suggested pirates attacked, though this seemed unlikely given the untouched valuables. Natural disasters were considered. Could a water spout or sudden sea quake have frightened the crew into abandoning ship? Yet the ship showed no signs of severe weather damage. Another theory centered on the missing lifeboat and navigational instruments. Perhaps Captain Briggs believed the ship was in imminent danger. Maybe he feared an explosion from the alcohol fumes or thought the vessel was sinking due to the water in the bilge. In such a scenario, he might have ordered everyone into the lifeboat, intending to stay close to the ship. A sudden storm or misfortune could have separated them, leaving them lost at sea. Despite extensive investigation, Solly Flood could not find conclusive evidence of foul play or negligence. The court eventually released the Mary Celeste, and salvage payments were awarded to the De Gratia crew, though significantly reduced due to lingering suspicions. The mystery remained unsolved, and the fate of the Mary Celeste's crew continued to haunt all who heard the tale. The Mary Celeste's return to service did little to dispel the aura of misfortune surrounding her. She changed hands several times, each new owner hoping to distance the ship from its ill-fated reputation. Yet, misfortune seemed to follow wherever she sailed. Under new captains, the ship experienced a series of unfortunate events. Crew members reported feeling uneasy on board. Some fell ill under mysterious circumstances. Accidents plagued the ship collisions with other vessels. Groundings and inexplicable mishaps became common occurrences. Sailors whispered that the Mary Celeste was cursed, haunted by the spirits of those who had disappeared. One particularly troubling voyage saw the deaths of the captain and several crew members, further fueling rumors of a curse. The ship's owners struggled financially, unable to profit from her operations due to constant setbacks and the reluctance of sailors to serve on her. Desperate to be rid of the ship, her final owner, Captain Gilman C. Parker, devised a fraudulent scheme. In 1885, he loaded the Mary Celeste with a worthless cargo, heavily insured, and deliberately wrecked her off the coast of Haiti on Rochelet Reef. He intended to claim the insurance money, but the plan unraveled. Investigators found evidence of fraud and Parker faced charges. Although acquitted due to lack of evidence, his reputation was destroyed, and he died in poverty shortly thereafter. The remains of the Mary Celeste were left to rot on the reef, her timbers slowly consumed by the sea. Yet her story refused to fade. The mystery of her abandoned voyage continued to captivate the public imagination, inspiring writers, artists, and filmmakers. The legend grew, transforming the Mary Celeste into a symbol of the sea's unfathomable mysteries. Over the years, countless theories have been proposed to explain the fate of the Mary Celeste's crew. Advances in technology and maritime knowledge have allowed researchers to revisit the case with new perspectives. One scientific theory suggests that the nine empty barrels of alcohol, 
made of red oak and more prone to leaking, could have released noxious fumes. A buildup of vapor in the hold might have led to a small explosion or the threat of one. Tests have shown that an alcohol explosion could occur without leaving burn marks. Supporting the idea that Briggs ordered an evacuation as a precaution, another possibility is that faulty navigation instruments led Briggs to believe they were closer to land or that the ship was in peril. Misreading the situation, he may have decided to abandon ship temporarily. Alternatively, a sudden and severe weather event, such as a rogue wave, could have damaged the ship and frightened the crew. Some have explored psychological explanations, considering the immense pressures of sea voyages in the 19th century. Could fear, stress, or even collective hysteria have driven the crew to make irrational decisions? Despite these theories, the lack of concrete evidence means the true fate of the Mary Celeste's crew remains elusive. The silence of the sea has preserved the mystery, allowing it to endure through generations. The Mary Celeste continues to sail through the annals of history, her story a haunting reminder of the ocean's vast and unexplored depths.